All right, time now, 813. Good morning, I'm Dan Edwards, and I hope you slept well last night because we're finding out that the path to a good night's sleep may start at the gym. Erica Edwards reports. And there we go, to your right. These people should sleep well tonight. We're going to pick it up a little bit now. Let's According to a new ready. poll from the National Sleep Foundation. And it turns out the more you exercise, the better your sleep is likely to be. The poll of a thousand adults found regular exercisers slept better and felt more refreshed in the morning than people who did not exercise. The reason for the link between physical activity and a good night's sleep isn't clear, but depression and anxiety tend to be common in people who suffer from insomnia. We know that exercise can improve depression. We know that exercise can improve anxiety. Vigorous exercise any time of day seemed to help most. But it doesn't take heavy lifting to benefit. When you can, get up and take a walk, stretch some. It doesn't even have to be vigorous exercise. Even light exercise can help improve the likelihood that you'll get a good night's sleep. Taking a walk, splashing around, hula hooping, anything that gets your body moving can help keep you still at night. All right, there you have it. Kind of a lead in to what we're about to talk about. What if your trouble sleeping is beyond proper exercise? What if it's, you know, more than just a lack of time to fit it in? What if it's more serious like sleep apnea? Well, right now we are joined by a doctor to talk to us exactly about that. Dr. Melinda Ruff from the Centerville Family Medicine at Miami Valley South. Dr. Ruff, thank you for joining us this morning. Absolutely. You look well rested, ready oh. to go on a Monday morning. Absolutely. <laughs> well, first talk to us about sleep apnea. What What is it and how serious of a problem is this? Well, sleep apnea is something where you're actually stopping breathing while sleeping. So a lot of people will get symptoms like snoring, but it's actually when you physically stop breathing. Uh, it's generally for short periods of time mm -hmm. because the brain will take over and will make you start breathing again. So oftentimes you'll have gasping for air uh, and your sleep partner may notice it oh, before yeah. you do. Um, and then sleep apnea can be dangerous because it can lead to other health problems like heart disease, high blood pressure, stroke, uh, even diabetes. All right, so how do you basically diagnose someone that has officially sleep apnea where it's uh, at this dangerous threshold that you're talking okay. about? Most commonly we'll see patients that come in because their sleep partner has told them that they have these symptoms, that they're having very loud snoring and that it seems like they're stopping breathing and then mm. they'll gasp for air uh, and they may not even wake up, but it's bothersome to the partner. Oh, yes. so, so that patient will oftentimes come in and tell us about the, these symptoms, and then we order a sleep study. And the sleep study are actually videotaped while sleeping, and they, they're taking other measurements at the same time to find out if you're having mm -hmm. sleep apnea, how often it's happening, and how severe it is for you. All right, so you say, doctor, that you may not know that you even have sleep apnea because you're sleeping through it. Right, so you exactly. don't have a spouse or a significant other with you. How, what's some of the symptoms that you just wake up, you're so tired, well, you know something? Things right. right. Other things you may notice are certainly some right. daytime sleepiness, falling asleep very quickly during the day, yeah. um, and then uh, sometimes you'll have kind of decreased concentration, poor performance uh, at mm. school or at work. Um, those can be some other symptoms that you may notice. Baggy eyes like morning people <laughs> have all the time. Well, you certainly don't have those. <laughs> well, well, thank goodness for makeup. I thought I'd never say that on camera. But, uh, doctor, what do children have different symptoms than adults, or is it all about the same? Uh, uh, children may not necessarily have sleep apnea as often as adults. Mm -hmm. uh, it tends to be more um, people who are heavier have a very uh, heavy neck um, because it's literally the, the airway kind of closing off. You know, um, children can have larger tonsils, uh, swollen uh, adenoids and things like that that can cause some other sleep problems. Though. How about some of these advertised products like mouthpieces and things like that? Do they help? They or? actually can help okay. because it's changing the, how the anatomy kind of fits together. So we're, uh, I guess basically the best thing to do is get a professional diagnosis from you and go right. from there. Correct? Exactly, to okay. determine the best treatment. And there's things uh, like CPAP, which is a, an airway right. pressure where it's blowing air down into your um, airway so that it doesn't close off. And then, like I said, or like you were talking about, some right. of those uh, other appliances, okay. the dental things that kind of change the shape of uh, the mouth uh, can help out as well. And it's, losing weight helps too. Yeah, well, absolutely. It is vitally important because you're, you're, you're Health is your wealth. And if you're not getting a good night's sleep, it can really have a detriment to your life. Absolutely, absolutely. And there's some dangerous consequences if it is untreated. All right, doctor. If we want more information, we can contact you at Centerville Family Medicine. That is correct. At Miami Valley South. That Dr. Ruff, thank you so right. much for being with us. Thank we appreciate you. it.